Good morning, church, and welcome to our Sunday online worship experience. We are glad that you can join us today because today is not just a normal Sunday celebration. Um, today, we celebrate one of God's greatest gifts to us. We, s- we celebrate the head of the family. It is, it is Father's Day. So we want to we wanna greet all the dads out there watching with us. Happy Father's Day. If you haven't yet, um, tag your dads in the comments below and greet them. Happy Father's Day. And for those, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ace. I am one of the young adults here at CLC. And today it is my honor and my privilege to share the message of God to you. And I also want to thank Pastor Ron for, for trusting me to share today again. Um, I just want to make it clear. Uh, last year, I also had the opportunity to share the message during Father's Day, just like this. And if you know, if you remem- remember, I said that I wasn't a father yet last year. But this year, I'm happy to say that I'm still not a father. <laughs> Even though I'm not a father yet, I am very blessed. And I praise God because I have a father who raised me to, to be the man that I am today. So, thank you, Dad. And to start off today's message, I just want to give you a brief summary of Father's Day. And in 1910, there was a young lady named Sonora Smart Dodd, and she actually established Father's Day after hearing a sermon about Mother's Day. You know, as, a, as someone who was, who was raised by a single dad, she thought that fathers also deserves a day of grace. You know, to show her appreciation for all the hard work and love of her dad to her and her siblings. She thought there should be a day to pay honor to him and, of course, other dads like him. And, and that's why we're here today. You know, um, in, in Ephesians 6, it says, Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. So we're here today to honor and pay respect to all the fathers out there who loves us unconditionally and who works so hard to give us a better life. And of course, we're here today um, to give honor to our Heavenly Father. You know, throughout, throughout the Bible, we can see that, that God revealed Himself to us as our Father. And I believe that, that His Word provided us some principles to live by as men and of course as fathers. So today, I just want to talk about those principles that that we can actually apply in our lives so that we can truly reflect God's heart, most especially in our own family. But more importantly, for for us children to be be reminded and see our dads the way God designed them. And once we see how God designed each and every one of them, uh, we can truly appreciate and honor them for everything that they do for us. So, so today, um, I really hope and encourage all of us that this Father's Day, and I know there's a lot of things happening around the world, but but to just to take a moment and and reflect on these few principles that makes a man a godly father. So, if you if you are already a father, I'm sure that you are already doing what we're going to talk about. But if not, then I hope that today will spark something inside of you to to make a change. And if you are being fathered, which I believe all of us, then this message will help us to appreciate the gift of fatherhood. You know, even even if you're a woman trying to raise your children alone, I believe this message will help you to understand what to look for and what voids to fill and to know what a father would do in his absence in the life of your children. And even for the single men, you know, you guys can take notes. This will prepare you to be the man that your future wife is praying for. And you know who you are. I'm talking to you. Um, Type in the comments below. That's me. And just thank me later. You know, someone messages you. And and for men like me who who is looking forward to be a father in the future, I'm sure that we can take something Um, from this talk. So today, whatever your situation is, I believe that we can all learn something from today's message. So I encourage all of us to to really 
lean in and prepare our hearts to receive from God. But before that, um, let's just pray. Father God, we just thank you for today. This is your word and speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so um, there are many principles of godly fatherhood, but today I just want to leave you guys with um, three, maybe four simple principles that I believe dads are meant to be or meant to do as they fulfill their roles to lead their families. All right, if you guys are ready, just type, I'm ready. All right, here we go. Um, number one, dads provide. You know, dads are providers. When I talk about provision, I believe it's more than, than money. You know, dads provide wisdom. They provide, they provide life lessons, friendships, advices. You know, they have a giving spirit and they add something to our lives. And we see this in the Bible from, from God himself. You know, he is a giver. And, and we know that in John 3.16, he said that, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son for whoever believes in him will have eternal life. And then in, in, in chapter 10, Jesus said that the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. You know, our lives are richer and fuller because he is in it. You know, providing uh, is not always about material things. Those are good things, especially for us children. You know, when, when our parents provide for us, it's, it's always good. But it's more than that. You know, dads should be a provider and it should be in our DNA. You know, when God created man, he created man in his likeness and image. And did you know that one of the names of God is, is Jehovah Jireh? The Lord will provide. So today, I encourage all of us, not just the dads, but all of us to choose to be a giver and not a taker. I believe that that it is really important for dads to teach their kids about this one. And I'm thankful because I have a dad who showed me how to, to give even when we don't have much. And that's what dads do. I hope the children today will see that, um, that that's the heart of the father. And that should be enough reason for us to honor our dads, not just on Father's Day, but every day of our lives. So that's number one, dads provide. And number two, Dads protect. Um, dads are our protector. They are protective. And being protective is one of the characteristics of God. In Isaiah 41, um, during, during the time that the people of Israel was in exile during their captivity in Babylon, God said that, you know, so do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand, said, for I am with you. You know, God wanted to assure us that he is with us and that he is our protector. And in Romans 8.31, it says that if God is for us, then who can be against us? And this is the heart of God that I believe was passed on to our dads. And of course, us as well. Um, dads are meant to be protective because he cares for his children and he cares for his family. And I know, um, especially for us children, uh, this can be really annoying sometimes. I remember when I was younger and even now, every time I ask for, for their permission, if I can go out or if I can go somewhere, and it's always like an interview, you know, who are you with? What are you doing there? Um, and then when you're, when you're, you're, when you're finally out, you know, there's, there's more questions. They're going to call you. Where are you now? What time are you coming home? How are you going home? Who is driving you home? You know, there's so many questions that, that sometimes I just rather stay home so then I don't have to go through it. And, and I know we complain about our parents, but here's the simple truth. And, and I'm talking to the children now. Um, your dad and, of course, your mom, uh, they do that because because they care for you. They do that because they love you. They do that because they don't want anything bad to happen to you. You know, they care for you. So, so next time you complain about your dad um, for the children, I challenge you to, to change your perspective, change how you see things. Um, rather than complaining and whining, 
you know, why don't you say thank you? Because he cares for you. Because you have a dad that cares for you. So dads, um, thank you for, for being protective. So that's number two. Dads are protective. And number three, third one, dads, discipline. In Hebrews 12, 4 to 12, it says, In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And have you completely forgotten this word of encouragement that addresses you as a father addresses his son? It says, My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline, and do not lose heart when he rebukes you, because the Lord disciplines the one he loves, and he chastens everyone he accepts he accepts as his son and then verse 7 says endure hardship as discipline god is treating you as his children for what children are not disciplined by their father if you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline then you are not legitimate not true sons and daughters at all moreover we have all had human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it how much more should we submit to the Father of spirits and live? They, dis they discipline us for a little while, as they thought best. But God disciplines us for our good, in order that we may share in His holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at that time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees and this is why we get disciplined by god and and by our dads again verse six it says for the lord disciplines those he loves you know discipline is not used um to point out our mistakes but rather i believe that it teaches us and guides us away from any harm that may come you know in in the verse it says that there's no discipline is enjoyable enjoyable while it's happening it's like it's like when a gardener prunes or cuts off what's dead you know after the dead part is cut off the plant actually starts to flourish and grows even more and i know i believe that many of you knows about this because you know you like plants you know when our parents discipline us it hurts but but they're pruning the behaviors that are not acceptable which allows us to grow and that's what dads are here for you know, they're here to discipline us, to align us, to do what is right, and of course, to help us grow. And for the dads, remember Ephesians 6, 4, it says that fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. So that's number three, dads, discipline. And lastly, um, number four, dads, forgive. You know, a father's love is, is so unconditional. Many people can say that their dads rarely show emotions. But, but when a father loves, I believe that he loves his children so deeply. And of course, what is a Father's Day message without the story in Luke 15? You know, we see this in the story of the prodigal son. And the son basically, basically told his dad that he wished that he was dead by asking for his inheritance when, when, when the dad was still alive. And not only that, but the son spent all of his money on worldly things. But, but when the son came back home and asked uh, the dad for forgiveness, the father did not hesitate to demonstrate his forgiveness. And, and this is the kind of father that we have. You know, I hope that for us children, I hope this message provides us a different perspective to see what our dads are like. You know, once we see what our dads do for us and the love that they give us, it allows us to appreciate them even more. And for that reason, um, fathers, we honor you and we respect you and we salute you for everything that you do for us. And for all the dads that are listening today, I hope and I pray that these principles that we just talked about will penetrate your hearts as you grow with your children. I pray that each and every one of you desires to be a better father and that this message will remind you to look at God as the greatest example of a father. Mm -hmm.